Imagine you happen to get into a mortuary and you find a person lying cold staring at you. You can hear his heart beating and you can hear his short breath. Now it's creepy to think of. Anyway, it's truly fictitious and I'm not here to waste your time by discussing the impossible. But what if I say there are possibilities to bring back the dead? This is Arun from Shastra Sanki and today we are going to explore the possibilities of reviving the dead and the advancement taking place in the field of reanimation. The concept of revival is still considered to be part of those age-old fictions we have been listening to. But these are not just random theories. In fact, scientists have been researching on this for more than 100 years now. Let's just travel back in time and check out. How would you react if you see a lifeless person being thrown onto a trotting horse? I will be surprised. But the trotting of horse would help in moving the diaphragm and the chest walls in and out so as to force enough air into the lungs and thus initiating the breathing process. These experiments were actually carried out in many cities in Europe the back in 1700s. The Dutch used yet another fascinating technique to revive the drowned people by using the tobacco smoke. But how? How did they insert the smoke into the body? This is the way. Yeah, yeah. This happened. They instilled the smoke through the rectum of the affected person. They say that the nicotine in the tobacco smoke helps in triggering the brain to release adrenaline, thus increasing the strength and the rate of heart contractions. Well, of course, these techniques are seems to be very strange. But these can be considered as the ancestors of present day techniques. This instance from the past shows us the possibilities of reviving the dead. Now, here is another story of how two dogs named Lazarus 4 and Lazarus 5 was brought back to life. This story dates back to year 1932, where Robert E. Cornish, a notable scientist in the field of reanimation, decided to carry out his experiments on Lazarus dogs. The dead bodies of the dogs were placed on a titter board or a seesaw, which was used to keep the blood flowing. A mixture of adrenaline and anticoagulant or a blood thinner was used to inject into their circulatory system. The experiments were actually carried out on five dogs. The first three dogs did not show any sign of life. But the second one, the second one did remain in coma for eight hours before perishing. And as with the case of the fourth and the fifth dog, they did manage to survey, but was blind and brain damaged. Did that remain to about zombies? 
no these zombies these zombies does not exist in the real world okay and here in this case the dogs within few months came back with full strength and as a matter of fact only cornish no other scientist has given confirmation to this cornish also tried to revive the victims of heart attack and electrocution with the tita bot however this proved to be unsuccessful but but it sure did ignite the hope for many scientists who worked in this field now i'm pretty sure that this story has instilled some curiosity in your mind not yet then gear up guys because this story of kelly dwyer going to break the ground of your curiosity fast forward to year 2011 the resuscitation of kelly dwyer Kelly Dwyer, an environmental educator by profession, had once set out to hike a beaver pond trail. And third after, she failed to return home even after sunset. Panicked by missing, her husband and doctor went in search for her. Then they found her in a icy dark water hole submerged up to her neck. You can obviously imagine the situation of a person drowned in an icy cold water for hours. Her body temperature was 15 degrees Celsius at that point of time. Her heart stopped beating even before she could get into an ambulance. The doctors tried to restart her heart by warming her and even defibrillating. Her body temperature had then been raised up to 21 degrees Celsius. Later on, the doctors attached her to a cardiac bypass machine, thus opening the doors for miracles to happen. The machine helped in keeping her warm and filtered and oxygenated her blood. The blood started gushing through all the blood vessels, and after five hours of Kelly being declared to be dead. the doctors found her heart beating well this is one among the many stories of people who had been in critical stage and had come back to life we have seen many incidents from the past as an evidence for the revival Now an obvious question that will arise now is of the recent advancement in the field of revival have there been any let's check that out sometimes some random stories would be the breeding ground of great ideas and inventions such was the case with robert ettinger robert ettinger a 12 year old boy happened to read a book named the jemison satellite which actually gave him the idea to put a basis for the technique known as cryonics later on ettinger came to be known as the father of cryonics and the founder of cryonics institute in michigan cryonics is a technique of deep freezing the bodies in liquid nitrogen this technique also known as cryopreservation uses the temperature of minus 180 degrees celsius to store the brain information which helps in the revival of the person later so far only embryos no humans have been revived and today The body of Ettinger also lies in cryopreservation in the Cryonics Institute. 
along with the cryonic institute there are other three institute around the world conducting research on this cryonics they are alcor in us cryoras in russia and shantong yingfeng life science research institute in china now we usually say that there is no chance of a person being rescued once he or she is shot or stabbed that's probably because we have never come across the emergency preservation and resuscitation or simply epr it is a medical procedure where the body is cooled rapidly to 10 to 15 degrees celsius generally our body cannot tolerate not having blood flow for more than few minutes but by cooling our body epr by some extra time because this eventually slows down the process that takes place when there is no blood flow and thereby increasing the chance for the person to survive the epr technique for cardiac arrest from trauma is currently under clinical trial and is estimated to finish its primary completion by december 2022 stem cells are the hype these days but before we jump in what exactly are these stem cells stem cells are the body's master cells that is all cell arise from these cells such as blood cells nerve cells muscle cells and so on for these stem cells there are two main important properties firstly the ability of self renewal which ensures the supply for replacing the cells lost due to aging and injury secondly the ability to differentiate into different specialized cells such as brain cells heart cells bone cells etc for more information on stem cells you can watch our webinar by dr hia ghosh of ncbs tifer link to the webinar will be provided in the description now that we have an idea of what stem cells are scientists are planning on using these stem cells to revive the dead one such trial is initiated by philadelphia based bioquark the project is going on by the name reanima project the study aims to inject stem cells into the spinal cord of the clinically brain dead people the patient also receive an injected protein blend electrical nerve stimulation and laser therapy targeted towards the brain the main goal is to grow neurons and prompt connection to each other and bringing the brain back to life this study was launched in rudrapur in april 2016 but was shut down in november 2016 as a failure to get clearance by the drug controller general of india however ira pastor the ceo of bioquark is planning on ensuring the trials outside india so far no updates are available on these trials what do we take from all this well it seems the scientists are trying to revive the dead and building hope for figuring out a solution very soon while looking at this puzzle we can say that being somewhere called helps as in the case of kelly toyer this is because the cells are deprived of oxygen and other nutrients which would cause the cells to self destruct however in a cold environment it slows down the process and reduces the metabolic needs of the cells this ensures the brain and other organs to escape damage far longer than in room temperature but apart from that everything is still a mystery in the end if you opt for cryonics and it turns out to be a dead tank so what's now well 
alexitocin a russian transmilase has discussed four different plans in a paper called the immortality roadmap one of them from the four being cryonics which if is a dead end then probably moving to digital immortality would be the next option Alexi recommends collecting everyday memories and personal experience in a digital format such as audio video or even noting them down and storing in an indestructible hard drives or disk until super intelligent ai comes into existence and takes all the information to create a digital version of yourself based on the experience and memories now this all way in the future sometimes around 2600 Now coming back to the present, this all may not be that easy as it sounds. It may restore a person's life, but whether it's a life worth living is another matter. Some patients, after reviving, remain unresponsive or brain dead. That's a painful situation. So my take from all these: learn how to perform CPR. Save a life. You know what? Hope you all liked our topic of discussion today. And if you still feel like you want to know more, go straight to our website www.shastrasinghi.com, and you can find the article on the title "Can We Raise the Dead." The link to the article is also given in the description box. And if you want to join us in the venture of spreading science to the community, you just mail us to shastrasinghi at gmail dot com. and don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel for more science updates until we meet the next time this is arun signing off